Hello, my name is Simon Meckle. I'm an independent IT consultant in the south of Germany. My main focus is on IT infrastructure monitoring and end-to-end -end testing with Robot Framework. Which brings us directly to the title of my presentation. This is Testing Meets Monitoring. You all know what testing means and to monitor a test simply means to schedule it in a regular interval and to record the data over time. Of course, there's Jenkins to execute tests and uh, this is indeed the right tool if robot tests should be part of, for example, a CI-CD pipeline. But if you simply want to know how a robot test behaves over time, if you want to get uh, performance graphs for runtime or if you want to get notified at three o'clock in the morning because your business application is broken, then this is for you. I will first explain only the most important things you should know about the open source monitoring system CheckMK so that you get an understanding about its functionality. In the main time of my presentation, I will show you how I integrate a simple Selenium test into CheckMK in four steps with the help of RobotMK. So let's first talk about CheckMK. CheckMK was written 2008 by Matthias Kettner in Germany as a kind of Nagios add-on. Nagios is a very old and stable open source monitoring system, which has its beginning in, I think, 2002. And CheckMK evolved from an add-on to a full featured IT monitoring system, and it can monitor anything you have in your IT infrastructure. So networks, databases, and uh, there are over 1,800 check plugins on board, which you can already use. So there is no need to install any other plugins or add-ons. There are two editions of CheckMK. There is the raw edition, which is open source, and an enterprise edition, which has additional features and enterprise support. A common and most overseen problem in IT infrastructure monitoring is that it only covers what fits into the OC layer model, if you have ever heard of it. It's a modeling approach to show how network packets are handled in computer systems. Layer one is the layer which is connected to the transmission medium. This is cable or air. Layer seven contains the definition of higher protocols like HTTP, FTP, etc. It's called the application layer. But the application itself are out of this monitoring scope. They are above this layer 7. Monitoring systems can check if a server can respond to an HTTP request bar. They aren't able at all to test the application's functionality. And the problem I have mentioned is that it's dangerously easy to believe that if the monitoring systems or the monitoring checks for a database, networks, servers, and so on, are okay, then the application must also be okay. This is only a hypothesis. We are only monitoring the preconditions to run the application properly. And this is why I thought about a way to integrate robot framework tests into the same system which already monitors my infrastructure. And this is RobotMK. This is me standing on the stage with shaking knees during the Robocon in January 2020 introducing my very first draft of Robert M.K. in a lightning talk session. Now, more than a year has passed and you will now see the project at its current state. And this is the last slide of my presentation before we jump into the demo. You can see a very abstract picture of how Robert M.K. works. The Robert M.K. plugin on the client side on the monitoring client is responsible to execute the robot framework tests and to pass the result XML back to the CheckMK server. These are my raw data. A corresponding RobotMK check on the CheckMK server parses the XML and this is where all the magic happens. Here we are able, for example, to monitor the runtime of any suite, test or keyword. And the CheckMK system will then send me notifications whenever, for example, a robot test fails or exceeded one of its runtime thresholds. Now let's do this on a fresh Windows virtual machine. 
So this is my Windows 10 test VM and here we have a small Selenium test in Robot Framework. It opens the Selenium Easy web page, a simple sandbox web page to test different uh, page elements. It enters the value of two variables into fields, submits and checks if the page then displays exactly these values. And this is how it looks like. So that's all. This machine is already monitored by CheckMK about its basic metrics, CPU, memory usage, hard disk usage, and so on. So this means there is already the monitoring agent of CheckMK installed. All I have to do now is to copy this robot framework test into a folder within the agent's directory. So this is the folder Selenium test. I copy this into program data CheckMK agent robot. So this is all. This was the first step and this is the only robot related thing we have to prepare on the client side. If you are pulling the robot test out of a version control system like Git, for example, the client will always get the latest stable test version. The client currently doesn't know anything about robot framework. So far we have only copied the folder to somewhere else. It's now time to define what has to be executed on the client. So let's log in into the CheckMK site. And if you remember the architecture uh, picture of RobotMK, there is a RobotMK plugin script, which is written in Python, and a YAML control file. This file is read by the plugin and contains everything the plugin should know about the test execution parameters. How do we now bring these two files on the client side? In the open source edition of CheckMK, you can roll out the YAML file and the plugin with any automation tool you like, for example, Ansible, Puppet, or Chef. I would recommend you to use the enterprise edition of CheckMK, which is free for a maximum number of 10 hosts. And in this version, you can use a very nice feature called the Agent Bakery, which creates a customized MSI installer, especially for this target system containing the basic CheckMK monitoring agent plus the RobotMK plugin plus the generated YAML file with the special robot test suite information. This all is configurable on a web, which I'm doing now. A basic concept of CheckMK are the rules. There's a special rule for Robot Framework to say the agent bakery, please bake me an MSI agent for this particular Windows VM with the RobotMK plugin. A rule can have a description to know what's inside. execute the Selenium test and also a comment and documentation URL. So now let's look at the rule content. If we do not set anything here in this rule, the RobotMK plugin will simply scan the robot directory and execute any suite found there. We want to specify the suite and set the directory name of Selenium test. And if you remember, my test contained two test variables, tool1 and tool2, which are set by default to foo and bar. I want to set these test variables by command line parameters. 
For this, we can open the Robot Framework Parameters checkbox. And here I can see a handful of the most common command line parameters of Robot Framework. Under Variables, I can now add the variable for tool one. I set this to robot framework and for the second variable to Python. So let's suppose I want to execute the same test a second time with different tool names in the variables. In this case, I can set a suite tag which I call here, for example, testing, to make this suite unique and click on add test suite. In the second test suite field, I also set selenium test as the path and the variables tool one, I set check MK and tool number two should be robot mk. Here I set the tag, for example, monitoring. It's only a label. Okay. Below the test suite list, I can set the interval in which the robot mk plugin should execute the robot framework test which is by default 15 minutes. I can also set a caching time, which means how long the last result should be valid. So after a period of 16 minutes, Jack and K will inform me with a message saying me that there's something broken on this test machine and it's not possible to execute tests anymore. Yeah. For now, I'm setting here two minutes as execution interval and three minutes as a caching time. We can set the rest here to the default and most important, um, I should lastly restrict this rule to my Windows VM and click explicit host where I can choose the host name of my Windows VM and this rule will only get applied for this special host. And then I click on save. Now we can see that this rule has set a lot of parameters for the bakery. And we can see that the button agents has turned into orange, showing me that now it's time to bake the special MSI package, installer package for this Windows client. I click on bake agents and now the baking process starts in the background. This is a Python script I've written for RobotMK especially, which now writes the RobotMK YAML file and um, together with the RobotMK plugin, it creates a special MSI installer package for Windows. So in this list now we should see, yeah, here it is our Windows 10 VM and here are the list of the parameters in a table like view. And now it's time to install the MSI package on the Windows VM. I'm logging into the CheckMK web interface. Normally you would register the monitoring agent on the CheckMK server so that it, it can update itself. I haven't done this in this case because I want to show you the installation process. I go to monitoring agents and here we have our agent MSI package for my Windows VM. I'm downloading this and install it. So this is only an update of the pre-installed default agent. And now there are two things we can check. 
The first thing is if there is a robotmk YAML installed. So this is in the agent directory under config. Yes, there is a robotmk YAML file. And here we can see that the uh, robotmk bakery rule created um, a YAML file with uh, two suites contained in the suites key. We can see that the variables were set properly and the global settings like the cache time and the execution interval. The second thing we should check is if there is the plugin deployed. This is in plugins. And yes, here we have the Python script of RobotMK, which then will be responsible to execute the robot framework tests. Now we are back on the monitoring server. By default, CheckMK connects to each monitored host every minute and reads its monitoring raw data from the agent. This is, for example, CPU load, memory usage, interface, traffic, and so on. And now also contains the RobotMK data, including the XML files of the executed tests. And by the way, the Selenium test on the Windows machine runs completely headless. So there is no need to have a user locked in permanently. As we can see here, the CheckMK discovery check now already has detected that the agent monitoring data now contain also new data, the RobotMK data. But there is no monitoring check yet it can assign the results to. And this is why this check has the warning state, signaling me I have to review this. I can now execute the discovery and decide which of the agent raw data should be displayed as a monitoring check. Okay, and as we can see here, there seems to be some problem, but I don't care about this. The most important thing is that the test was discovered, both tests. And we also get a third check a RobotMK check, which has a special functionality. It's a kind of meta check, which tells me how many suites are planned and if all the state files are up to date, how much runtime was used and so on. I now click on fix all missing vanished service to make these undecided services appear in my list of monitored checks. And then I click on save. And now we can see three new checks. And when I do now a reschedule on this machine, I can get the new results. So this is my Robert MK meta check and these are my new two tests for the Robot Framework Suite. Now let's have a look into the details of a discovered service. I open for example the testing tagged check and we see that Robert MK has parsed the XML of Robot Framework and shows us how suites, tests and keywords are nested. Let's suppose we want to get an alarm if the second test of this particular check runs for a too long time. This is also be done within a rule in CheckMK which can be accessed over this action menu parameters for this service. Here I see that the robot framework rule which influences the behavior of this check is still set to the default value. I can click this rule and create a specific rule for this service on this host Windows 10 and this service name.
Now I have different options. I can control the output depth so that the nesting of suites and keywords, which are the only ones which can be nested, can be limited to save a display space. I want to monitor the runtime of the test and here I can define a regular expression. This pattern should be enough to match especially this single test. And I set a threshold of 0 0.2 and let's say 4 seconds. The same mechanism to match objects within the XML with regular expressions can be applied to the performance data creation, which I also do. I want also to have a performance graph for this test I want to monitor. Okay, everything is set. I click on save, activate this change. Now I go back to my Windows host and reschedule the checkmk check, which is responsible for fetching the monitored data from the agent. And now we can see that the second check of RobertMK turned into critical. And if we click, we can see the reason why this check turned into critical. The second test has a too long runtime because it's critical and this also turned the overall state into critical. We also get a nice performance graph which is empty <laughs> at this time of course because we already started to monitor and uh, this graph also contains the warning and critical threshold line we just have set. I hope that while you're watching this presentation, I will have released the new version of RobertMK. It has a feature called Runtime Headroom Monitoring. What means this? The Runtime Headroom is the time which is left from the execution interval after the test has finished. If you want your test to run under similar conditions, you always have to ensure that the execution interval of the test is set to a higher value than the maximum runtime. This graph will help you to determine a proper value. Okay, you have seen now that it's very easy to configure RobotMK so that robot framework tests are executed on a client and to get the results monitored by CheckMK. RobotMK is already used, for example, to monitor the big application landscape of the Swiss government with applications from very old up to modern web applications. I still have many ideas to improve the project and one of my next goals will be to not only transport the robot XML but also the HTML report of robot to the CheckMK server. This was a requirement of one of my customers so that the alarm email for on call duty guys also contains the HTML log with embedded screenshots of the failed test. So, Thank you for listening and watching my presentation. Now I'm very curious about your questions. Thanks. Hey Sammy, welcome to Robocon. Hi Joe, nice to meet you. <laughs> awesome to speak with you again. So let's just dive right into it because we have a yeah. short amount of time. Uh, first okay. question is from Tristna. Tristna wants to know, does RobotMQ on client server run multiple VMs that are located in different geographic, uh, at, at, uh, different zones geographically? 
yes, this works. The only precondition is that the check and case server is able to reach the monitored host. There's also a possibility to send the results passively into the monitoring system, but this is another story. But principally, yes. How does the alerting work uh, to the right person if one of the test applications failed? Uh, the alerting is a mechanism of CheckMK itself. It's also rule-based and you can define if you want to get HTML, email, text, uh, you can change the subjects and so on. And uh, the um, content of the email is uh, primarily the same as you have seen in the web interface of CheckMK, but it's all configurable and I'm planning to implement the notifications so that also the HTML log gets sent to the recipient. Cool. So uh, next question is, can we include smoke tests as part of the robot MQ monitoring? Smoke test. I think this would be a topic of the CheckMK monitoring system. Um, I don't know if there's a plugin for CheckMK for smoke, uh, smoke test or smoke ping. Uh, it is smoke test. Ah, smoke tests. Ah. Uh, uh, load testing. Okay, um, I I wouldn't say it's the main focus of Robert and K to do load testing yeah, or smoke testing, but um, I am planning to um, to make Docker images of the Robert and K system so that you can start the tests uh, in Docker containers and do it on a broader basis. Well, so Tato wants to know: Have you found anything interesting yourself uh, with this uh, monitoring? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Yeah, they want to know, have you found any interesting stuff implementing this yourself with monitoring that you would not have found if you did not implement your solution? Um, I, I'm not sure if I get the question right. Uh, yeah, let me try to rephrase this. <laughs> um, what kind of stuff have you found user, using RobotMQ? What kind of issues have you found? Do you have any examples of things actually found in production using RobotMQ? Okay, um, I think the the, the most uh, critical point was to to transfer the XML um, within the uh, agent stream to the check and case server and then parse it on this side without installing a robot framework on the check and case server. Hmm. So this is all um, my own code, and uh, yeah, this was a little bit tricky, and um, but yeah, now it works. <laughs> How do you deal with false alarms? Uh, is it sometimes uh, sometimes you need to rerun a test to ensure there's really a problem with the monitored application? Uh, okay, the the test runs on a regular basis, so or every three minutes. So you you will get informed if there are false positives, and uh, I think the. Uh, kind of um, yeah, work with the tests is the same as with every robot framework test. Uh, yeah, you have to maintain it and um, to ensure that it doesn't produce false positives. Uh, Does it, can you set alerts to say only alert me if it fails twice in a row? I know. Um, yes, this is possible. Yeah, perfect. That, that's what helped me back in my day when we used something called like SightScope and production apps like that. Mm -hmm. So Manny wants to know, is running monitoring on the UI example using Selenium only a workaround until monitoring is implemented at a lower level? Or does it provide something that the lower levels can't show? Um, it's another scope of monitoring. So uh, I have written Robert MK especially to, to get something on top of everything which is monitorable with check and case. So we have API tests, uh, server tests, network monitoring tests, everything. But uh, Robert MK um, enables you to get a, a view from a higher point over your application landscape so that you can see the users can use your applications. But you can use whatever library you want. You can also do REST calls with Robert MK, of course. Everything which is possible with Robert Framework. So I know you're constantly updating this. This question is from Pekka. Does RobotMQ already handle skip and other new features in Robot Framework 4? Not yet, no. but soon. <laughs> cool. And I think the last question is 
Since check MQ is a system monitoring, should the robot test only check the health of the system underneath? No, I don't think, because this is the job of Jack and K, which is doing all the monitoring stuff. As I said, uh, monitoring databases, so the basis of the application landscape. And uh, I see Robot MK and Robot Framework as a tool to get uh, the availability overview of from, from a very high perspective. Great summit. Like I said, this is a small, uh, quick session, and all those are all the questions. Thank you once again for sharing this with the community. I think monitoring is a big deal uh, as we go forward in the coming years. So thank you for this uh, this uh, this addition. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs>